Welcome to this episode of Catching Creation. We're in South Carolina where the fireworks are legal and the salamanders are crawling. Cacao! Cacao! Welcome to this episode of Catching Creation. You may be wondering, what's this crazy thing on your thumb? Let me tell you, it's a lizard. But we're not even looking for lizards today. We're looking for salamanders in northern South Carolina, in the highlands, in the mountain areas. Now this is an anole lizard. They change colors from brown to black to green, depending on their mood. He's pretty stoked about being with me because he's solid green. So we're gonna let him go. Be on your way. And I hope that you'll enjoy this and have a lot of fun. Check this little guy out. This is a two-line salamander. He's such a cute little salamander, if a salamander can be cute. I think he is. If you notice, part of his tail is missing. Salamanders, a lot of times, will lose their tail from a predator trying to get them, and they can regenerate it. It'll grow back. How cool is that? Now this one is a two-line salamander, not to be confused with the three-line salamander. The difference is one line. <laughs> but this guy lives in the leafy litter uh, next to streams, under rocks. They are a really cool salamander. They're going to get to be about, about that big, sometimes a little bit bigger, but they stay relatively slender. They're a lungless salamander. And like I said before, they get all of their oxygen through their skin and same thing with all their moisture through their skin that's why they're an amphibian they have to live near water now a cool thing about these guys is their environmental indicators as with all amphibians so if you're finding a lot of salamanders in a habitat like we have been you know that it's a pristine habitat it's a good habitat and it's healthy if you stop finding them um, if you stop finding them in a habitat you know that the habitat is obstructed it's polluted and these animals can't survive in that habitat they're kind of like what people would call a biological indicator, like a canary in the gold mine, so to speak. So if there's a good amount of amphibians in a habitat, it's a healthy habitat. And that's something we need to remember as you go out looking for animals. Whoa, 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 check him out. Oh, this is awesome, dude. Gotta be very careful. Get my hands wet. This is a red salamander. And I'm being very cautious with this animal because I don't want it to dry out its skin because this is an amphibian. This is a salamander. Now they spend most of their life cycle in streams and areas either in or near water. Now occasionally, certain times of the year, like in the warmer months, this guy will actually come up on land and live under logs and things of that nature. But this is a really cool salamander. Again, this one's called a red salamander. And uh, the reason I wet my hands is because we have salts in our skin that can dry them out because they are an amphibian. He's what's called a lungless salamander. So their skin is very important to them because a salamander absorbs all of their moisture through their skin. They, they breathe through the dissolved oxygen in the water that gets dissolved through their skin, through the folds in their skin. Now this guy's also really cool in the fact that he's red like this. Now in nature, when something is brightly colored like this, it usually serves as a warning sign for things not to come near it because it could be toxic. Now he is slightly toxic to an animal to eat him, and a lot of people theorize that he could look this way to mimic the red eft, which is a form of an eastern spotted newt, which is subsequently more toxic than he is. But all the same, stuff really probably wouldn't want to eat him because he's got a foul taste. Now these guys are just really cool and they're very common down here uh, in South Carolina in this area that we're in, in the mountains. Such a cool animal. I'm just going to keep holding him for a few more minutes and I'm going to let him go. 
but he's such a cool font. Now he's got these colors that make him look dangerous, that make him look crazy to people on the outside. With your walk with Jesus, if people look at you, do you imitate the world? Do you look just like everyone around you? Do you look like something that would be even fearful to other people? Or are you something that's salt and light to the world? Like I said, we have salts in our hands that can draw him out and hurt him. But in the opposite, as a believer, are you salt and light in the world so that when people see you, you improve their life through Jesus Christ? You aren't uh, tearing them away from Jesus. You aren't pushing them away because you're scary or, or condemning or anything like that. But you're actually giving them the truth of the gospel and the love of Christ, and you look different than the rest of the world. Now we're going to let him go. Check this out. Right here is a plant. It's called jewelweed. And the enzymes in jewelweed break down urushol, which is the oil that's found in poison oak, which is exactly right beside it. Isn't that awesome that God creates the solution right next to the problem? Would you look at that? There's a salamander just out for a cruise, natural as can be. And look at me, here I am catching him, catching creation. Hey, who's to say I didn't catch him right now? Wink. <laughs> this is a spotted salamander. It's a very common salamander in the southeast, but you only really see them certain times of the year. During, uh, outside of their breeding season, you're really gonna only find them under logs and up on the banks and places like where we are right now under rocks. They live in a pretty much a subterranean lifestyle where they're underground almost all the time. Now they come out very specifically in uh, between November and February to breed. They come out at very specific times. The water conditions have to be perfect in the vernal pools, which are temporary wetlands in the forest. And uh, they come out at very specific times to breed. Things have to be almost perfect to get them to come out. How many people do you know like that with church? Everything has to be perfect to get them to come out to the body of Christ. Some people say, well, I can do my own religion thing at home, or I can do the church thing by myself if I just read my Bible. But you're not edifying the body. You're not being built up by other believers, and technically you're in error. Am I saying you're not a believer? Absolutely not. You can be a believer. But just like if we take a hot coal out of a fire and set it by itself, the ember's going to die. The same thing kind of happens when we go on our own. If conditions have to be perfect for you to come out the church, you might be cooling off like a hot ember or just out solo like this guy and easily, you know, preyed on by another animal. Which brings me to another point. The biology of this guy is really cool. The spotted salamander is one of the largest salamanders in this area. And he has these glands on his head to where if something were to bite him, he produces kind of like a noxious taste or a little bit of a toxin and it's a deterrent. It gives him just enough time to get away. But he is just a really cool guy. He looks like Jabba the Hutt or something crazy from Star Wars. <laughs> Alright, check it out. We just found this guy. It's a northern water snake. He is an awesome snake. So many people kill these things in their copperheads. But clearly he's not a copperhead. I mean, watch, we're gonna let him bite Chance. <laughs> he doesn't even care to bite Chance because he's calmed down a little bit. But this is a northern water snake. He is non-venomous. He is probably the most common water snake that we have in this area. And actually in this general area, the only real water snake that we have. But you can tell a few things from a standpoint design on him that are really cool. His eyes, for example, are oriented more towards the top of his head because he's a aquatic predator. So his eyes need to be oriented more towards the top so he can see out of the water. His scales are keeled. They're a little bit tougher scales and it helps, to, helps him to move through the water better. His tail is not really flattened out or anything. So he's not like a sea snake, he's a water snake. So That's this cool guy picture. is very good. One of the ways we know he's not a copperhead Number one, the pattern is not a copperhead pattern. Number two, if you look really close, let's see if we can look and see, his eyes 
have circle pu circular pupils, not like a cat's eye, so to speak, like a venomous snake will have, a, a slanted pupil. Now, one of their lines of defense is to musk like crazy, which they expel this nasty, noxious odor, just like a lot of the salamanders. They'll produce a chemical uh, to, to help them stay safe. Now, this guy, he's flattening out his head to look triangular, but if you really look at the nature and shape of his head, it's still relatively round, kind of like your thumb or your pinky. So you know that it's not triangular like an arrowhead. Although when he gets upset, he can flatten it out a little bit. Let's see, I want him to smile for you doesn't seem to be as mean as a normal one, which is good for us, but not so good for entertainment. So we're gonna let him bite me in the face. <laughs> ka Check this guy out. This is so cool. This is a marbled salamander. This is a fairly common salamander in this area as well and they come out in winter to breed in areas just like this behind me this is what we call a vernal pool or ephemeral wetland temporary wetland any number of names that you want to call it but basically it is a wetland that typically fills up in fall and winter and it can't sustain life for fish because it's not deep enough there's not really a natural source flowing in and out of it but what it does support are things like salamanders and tadpoles so it's a good habitat for amphibians and they won't get preyed on by fish. Now the cool thing about marbled salamanders compared to other salamanders is they will actually guard their eggs. So when the vernal pools are dry, they'll lay their eggs and they will lay around them until the vernal pools, the first winter rains come to fill the pools and they will guard and lay around the eggs until the waters start to fill the pool. The, tad, the eggs hatch into little um, polywog tadpole phase of a salamander and then they swim away, they go back on land and go hide under logs or debris like we just found this one under, but always relatively close to the vernal pools. And they're just a really cool salamander. They are in the family Ambistoma, uh, excuse me, the genus Ambistoma, and they are what we would call a mole salamander. And they call these guys mole salamanders because typically they have, like we talked about with the spotted salamander, they have a subterranean lifestyle where they live underground most of the year uh, in burrows like a mole so that's why they get the name the mole salamander it's just an amazing animal so just like this salamander has good parental care our heavenly father cares very much about us so much so that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and that's something to really think about god loved us so much that just like this salamander will lay around her eggs to assure that they survive, he sacrificed his only son so that we can survive for eternity with him. But it's not even just for that. Jesus wants a relationship with you right now. Don't wait till you get to heaven because when you get there, he might say, depart from me, I never knew you. Jesus wants to know you now, wants to have a relationship with you and really wants you to follow after him. Isn't this a cool salamander? Our God created him, and I'm so happy to have found one. Kaka! Check this guy out. This is a black racer. They're one of the most common snakes in the southeast. This is a baby. As you can see, he's got this pattern. A lot of people kill them mistaking them for a copperhead. But this snake's head's not even copper colored. People be crazy. He is a non-venomous snake. He's very beneficial for the ecosystem. He'll grow up to be about four to six feet in a big one, a big one would be six feet, but four foot, five foot's about an average length for an adult. He'll turn jet black. And they've got these angry looking eyebrows on top of his head. That's how you can usually tell that he's a black racer, not a black rat snake. But he's just a great animal. And we're so blessed to be able to find this cool little guy in the woods today. He's probably last year's baby, so we're gonna let him go, let him go on his way, and go find some more cool stuff. Woo! Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, 
this is a double score. It's like a double rainbow. Check these guys out. Now this is actually breeding season, which is probably why we're able to find two of these guys under the same log. This is an awesome find. These are slimy salamanders. Some would even say slippy slimy salamanders because they're so slippery. Now they call these guys slimy salamanders. This is actually a white spotted slimy salamander uh, in this region. But we will call them a slimy salamander because this specific species jumps. <laughs> but this specific species produces a really uh, sticky substance. If an animal tries to bite him or eat him, it almost glues their mouth shut. It's their line of defense. Now they're from the, uh, the genus Plethodon, which is a family of lungless salamanders. So like some of the other salamanders we've talked about, they don't breathe oxygen they, uh, through, through their lungs because they don't have any. They actually absorb it through their skin. Now this guy is just leaping all over the place. But have you ever got yourself in a sticky situation? And he's sticking my hands together. The thing we can do is talk to the Father. Prayer is one of the things that we can do and ask Jesus to help us out of a situation or if he's not helping us out of it, to at least help us get through the situation and learn what we're supposed to learn while we're in it. Now these are amazing animals. They eat soft-bodied invertebrates like uh, insects and crickets. Sometimes they'll eat other salamanders. And these guys are huge. These are the biggest I've ever seen for a slimy salamander. And as always, when we're releasing an animal, we don't want to lift it and then put them under it. We want to just let them crawl back under their home so that we don't crush them. Isn't that a cool find? I'm so excited to have found those guys. Daniel Charles here, Salamander Commander. You may be having a hard time hearing me right now because there's a lot of frogs singing in the background. Speaking of singing, Catching Creation fans, check out our Slippy Slimy Salamander rap video. It's really awesome. Check it out right now. Try. 
slippy, slimy salamander. That's what we trying to find.